record in the SEC this year might not reflect that, but still a good team. What do they do well? Yeah, I mean, I haven't studied everybody's record in the league. It's a little too early to assess that because a lot of, you know, people around here might have counted us out about halfway through the year. So, you know, when you start building up repetitions, the 30 games will kind of let you know where you stand. And if you can just stay afloat and be around 500, you're one of the better teams in the country. Um, so the teams I've seen in our league and any of the games I've watched, about everybody belongs in that category right now. Um, and then with them, yeah, I mean, you've got uh, one of the biggest traditions and one of the biggest names in our sport. Uh, and a lot of those guys that contributed to that national championship are, are still around. So it's a tall task, whether you're at home or you're on the road or you're playing whichever team. Uh, but this one certainly comes with a lot of boxes that are checked by what I'm talking about or what you referred to. Pretty similar team. I, I know a lot of key faces are gone, but do you see a lot of similarities in this team and last year's team? I, I think so. I think, um, you know, we've had some coaching staff changes in our league. So by the end of the weekend, you can kind of see some differences. And, and uh, it's not that there's pros or cons. It's more just kind of there's more than one way to skin a cat, so to speak. And uh, so it's the same coaching staff. And, and again, a storied a traditional program or a program with tradition, I should say. And then I'm kind of going over some of the names in my head. Um, you know, it's, it's nice when you can run skeins out there um, and, of course, crews. But uh, all the teams in our league seem to reload with whether it be the transfer portal or junior college or high school recruiting. And fortunately, we're getting to a point, And it started with the elimination of some of the minor league teams. Um, the rich kind of get richer, I guess, in the SEC. A lot of these high school kids are saying no to the draft because they see how good life is and, and maybe there's fewer jobs in minor league baseball. So everybody kind of seems to reload. So we'll spend a couple days uh, familiarizing ourselves with any new faces, but again, a lot of returners. Tim, yeah, when there's a team either like maybe, maybe like an LSU or Florida this year or like y'all last year or Ole Miss the year before that, that, that you know that's a good team and you know the record doesn't reflect that. Is there part of you when you're a coach preparing for a team like that that makes you think, you know, they're going to figure it out at some point. Let's just not have them figured out yet. Well, I think um, Alabama's series, when we went down there, um, Alabama was the better team that weekend, and it was a frustrating ride home. But this team really utilized a lot of what went on that weekend, and the coaches and the players kept referencing some things that happened. And, um, you know, s since then we've seen one-to-one -one going into Sunday a couple times. So that series benefited us, what I was saying or what I'm what I'm trying to say now this past weekend we played Auburn and these kids all like love looking up stuff and and we were told by two really good programs this team is not what their record is and if if they are they're the best team in the country with that particular record um, whether it be in the league again I don't look at that stuff too much I just know they didn't have as many SEC wins as they probably wanted and we saw it firsthand I mean on Friday night they exploded offensively, and every arm they brought out was, was really good. It just, you know, our offense was able to put some, some things together against them or some of their guys made some, some mistakes or didn't throw enough strikes, but um, you could see that talent. So we've experienced a lot in our, in our it's, it's only been a handful of weeks or four weeks, but we've experienced a lot, and one of them would, would kind of fall in that category you're talking about. Kind of going off of that, what do you want to see from your team this Friday that maybe you didn't see the past two Fridays? Yeah, I don't. I mean, last Friday we weren't at home. Would have been nice to be at home, and um, you know, to be good, you got to win at home, and to be great, you got to be able to win on the road. So it's nice that we were able to win that series. But if you're talking about Friday in particular, um, you know, I, I think our guys got off to a good start, and then it just kind of got frustrating in there for a moment. And I, I'll go back to what I referenced with, I you know, guess we were talking about peoples, but just kids in general. When one thing goes wrong, frustration can kind of creep in for a guy like me that wasn't very good, you know, mentally at times, and I wasn't a talented player. Um, for, for our kids, if two things go wrong, then they can kind of start to, and three things go wrong, it's like, well, it's not my day. And that's not a very good approach in the SEC. The minute you say it's not your day, it's not going to be your day. Um, so, so I'm talking my way into an answer. I think dealing with frustration, uh, whether it be on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday would be the key because it is going to come. And uh, even in our two wins, there were a moment of frustration this past weekend. So, so I think on Friday and setting the tone for the rest of the weekend, it's, you know, deal with frustration the right way when it does arrive. Just kind of broadly speaking, when you're looking at a pitcher that's you know, trying to get weekend opportunities and maybe hasn't had that in their career, what, what do you want to see before to kind of get, extend that opportunity? Um, throwing strikes and then good presence. 
Um, you know, again, a, a guy could could give up a hit or not give up a hit, but I think his mannerisms and, and just how he makes you feel. I mean, it's overly simple, but all coaches are looking for guys that make them feel good, make them feel comfortable, not going to lose sleep at night. They're not going to make them pace in the dugout. And uh, I've coached guys before that, you know, the numbers aren't great on the mound or at the plate, but you feel good that they're in there and you're completely fine with whatever the results are. So I think that's kind of what I mean by presence to define it, but, but also just strikes. And, you know, it kind of helps if you can say this guy's been there or done that, but at the end of the day, it don't, you know, there's, there's plenty of people that can roll into, um, you know, any kind of setting, a national championship game for their first time and play well. It's, it's happened. Um, so looking forward to using a couple guys that maybe haven't had any SEC action or not as much as they want. Is there an opportunity for Amex to get back in action this weekend? I think so. I mean, he hasn't got to the point where we, he's taken a bunch of swings yet. The defensive part is ahead of the offensive part. Um, we'd like to at least put him on the active roster so it's an option if he gets to that point. So last weekend he was not. So uh, it's not a very – I would give you a defined answer if I had one. I know he was going to meet with uh, Doc Clink after the game tonight, but uh, – would like to think that we can at least put him on that roster so he can be involved in whatever pregame activities he feels good about. And then, you know, maybe we'll have some availability. But it is still halfway point. Uh, all these games are valuable, but it is still halfway point SEC play. You guys have a plan for he going to throw this weekend? Um, we haven't discussed it. I mean, as, as soon as the game ends, we do start kind of talking about some things. But we want our guys to approach Tuesday like it's the main event, Super Bowl, whatever it might be. So in order to do that, we got to be in line with, with, you know, what they got going on or what we want them to do. So um, it truly is kind of a, a blind eye towards the weekend. And the, but as soon as the game's over, we only got a finite amount of time to get prepared. And rather than have hustle bustle, we'd rather be ahead of things. So we haven't talked about that point in general, but um, we have had some guys come back and, and be available to us. And so we'll, we'll kind of strategize as best we can who belongs on what day and, and what we want to do. But, um, you know, we, we've, got, we've got a pretty good idea about the guys who log innings or, or throw a certain amount of pitches for us. Tony, I guess there's never a time where you wouldn't want to have Billy Amick in your lineup if you could, but how nice of a luxury is it to know that you don't have to, you know, rush and, like, get in the lineup now? Yeah, no, and, and that should have been a part of my answer is, is you know, you got other guys playing well, and you also look to your right, and you got guys like, man, I think this guy could get it done for us. But, you know, other guys – it's like Colby Backus tonight has been tremendous, and he's been awesome about being patient. Uh, he's just as capable as most guys we have, but some guys have played really well in front of him, and he's pushing them, and it's, it kind of works two ways. Um, you know, so a little bit of similar on the infield. I mean, you got other guys that are anxious for those opportunities and taking advantage of them. And I think we got some capable guys. So there is no point in rushing them back. Um, and then it is nice to know, I mean, to lose a guy like that, I don't think we have a best player, but at times he's been our best player on both sides of the ball. So, um, you know, to lose him like that and been able to win some games has been huge. And it's kind of gone on on the mound too. What makes a guy like Luke Coleman so effective on the mound? Uh, you know, I, I think it's a deal where the stuff – uh, in our league, not just with him, in our league, uh, kind of shrinks your availability, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, how, how good the stuff is coming at you, how much movement it is, you know, it's, it's not like me just flipping it to you in the cage. Um, so you got to have a specific plan about what you want to do. And, you know, there, again, there's not as much room for air if it's, you know, not just flipping it to you, but a BP guy throwing overhand. So um, like, like a lot of the guys in our league, um, it's not only good stuff with good movement, but it's, you know, a multitude of pitches that he's able to throw in different situations. So. Thanks, Coach.